Hi, my name is Armans and I'm a digital uh, workplace service owner and uh, together I'm joined with uh, Enterprise Mobility MVP, Simon. And today we'll start uh, discussing what is digital workplace and uh, how do you actually, Simon, see it in a modern, modern age? Yeah, and that's a very good question because digital workplace to me has been evolving over the last couple of years. So looking back first and foremost, we started off with the same or really introducing digital tools to the workplace. So we now have uh, mobile phones, we have computers, we have tablets and so on. But to me, digital workplace today is about so much more. It's really about to how we can get digital transformation into every workplace, not just the places where we perhaps are used to working with a computer mm -hmm. or a phone. It can be anywhere where we can support the business by using technology. Everything from furniture to designing yeah, new buildings, yeah, manufacturing, everything you can possibly look at and see, is there a way we could make this more efficient, more productive, or easier for the user in any way using technology? And that, that's the thing when I design digital workplaces, I try to achieve two things. First and foremost, productivity. Mm -hmm. We need to really see and show that what we have been doing is something that you can measure. And also, it's vital to me to keep the users happy. Yeah. And so, I think you mentioned also the keyword, easy. Yeah, uh, That's the keyword, I would say, for the end user, yeah. that it's easy and uh, they don't have to worry about the thing. It's just something that happens in the background. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's again one of the vital parts for digital workplace IT should be unnoticeable for mm -hmm. the user and we are only there to aid them in what they do best our users are great at what they do regardless of what they do they can be working in a store storehouse they can be working building something and they are great at that mm -hmm. and we are only there to support them in what they do with technology one good example of that is AI in the workplace as an example and AI to me should only be there unnoticeable but mm -hmm. aid support and enhance the experience of the workplace yeah. regardless of where that workplace are I think I, there's a misconception uh, like from uh, people's uh, side that uh, AI is taking away our job or whatever yep. and I think that's not the goal here nope. it's just enhancing their already uh, exactly. work and enhancing yep. it to greater scale yeah and from a technology perspective, I also feel that we are now starting to really understand how other perhaps non, perhaps not the things we think about when we think about digital workplace, how it affects the digital workplace. Mm -hmm. So I usually don't design the back end for apps and systems and so on, but it's vital. But mm -hmm. something that I work quite a lot with now is to get the networking teams out with my customers to understand that, yeah, you have been designing networks for ages. They mm -hmm. have been supporting the digital workplace. But now we need to design networks with the digital workplace in mind, not just building a network and building a workplace, but we really need to tie them in mm -hmm. and again, understand that every single part of your IT infrastructure is a vital part for the digital workplace. Because without networking, we can't do that much but we yeah. can't keep building networks in the same way as we used to. We need to understand how it affects users and how it affects the digital workplace. Yeah. And one of the things I would say is the um, quick access, single sign-on. Yeah. User has to only care about one, let's say, security measure yeah. or one password to access all their applications, all their uh, systems, and yeah. that's it. And but that's also... At the same time, be secure. Exactly, and, and that's the thing. Ease of use mm -hmm. makes a workplace more secure. If you only need to remember one password, or not even remember a password, authenticate yeah. using biometrics or something, yeah. that makes everything more secure because you don't write your passwords down. If you can share documents or any kind of data in a secure way, that ensures that your users do not try to s share it in the perhaps easier way that they've used to do it. Mm -hmm. If we can provide a user with a security feature that actually, again, 
helps them or enhances the way they're working, that's something they will use. So to make things as easy as possible, it should be easy to do the right thing. That's again vital and something that we really need to look into from that perspective. We can secure things end to end, but if we don't take the human perspective in that, mm -hmm. it's no use because we are lazy in many yeah. cases. We, we want things to be easy and straightforward mm -hmm. and we don't want to require some help from our service desk, for example, to share a basic document. Yeah. So it's important to make things easy. We should always build a workplace with security in mind, but we also need to stay focused on the actual user and what they are supposed to do. Um, what do you think, uh, what digital workplace brings uh, security-wise and maybe for the IT staff or uh, what kind of advantages does it give over the old systems or old ways how it's been treated? I think that it's enabling us to do things again more efficient. We have more data than ever. Legacy security solutions aren't designed for that amount of data and that requirement of access to that data. Mm -hmm. So if we look at a cloud enabled or hybrid workplace, that's one of the vital parts. We need to use cloud services to enhance the experience we already have. Mm -hmm. And the cloud services will enable us not just to secure everything in a completely new way, but also stay compliant, stay productive, and reach the data, reach the tools wherever we are. Mm -hmm. But that also comes with some challenges because if the, the great example is that we sometimes assume, and we being IT people, assume that everyone wants to work from anywhere at any point in time. And yeah, some people want to do that, but that's also kind of risky because at the moment you enable a person to work from anywhere at any time securely, that could be a pressure on that person as well. Because now their employer could say, yeah, but you can work securely from home. I think you should be working more from home. Saying that, yeah, you should be working on times that may not be suitable to you. Mm -hmm. So technology is one aspect, but also the processes around it and the trust, both between the IT, part of an organization, so I need to trust that my emails reaches the correct persons, I need to trust that my data is secure, I need to trust the data access, but I also need to trust my employer to not use these new tools and techniques and advantages for, in a way that could hurt me as an employee. Yeah. So that the softer parts of Digital Workplace is getting more and more attention more and more vital and we really need to look into how we design the workplace and the processes around that workplace with again the user in mind. And I think uh, one of the problems that uh, this mobility very often uh, brings and uh, this idea bring your own device to work and work with it but yep. we can uh, make it secure is that people think that a uh, company can all of a sudden get your personal data yep. and stuff like that but uh, uh, I think great example is Azure Information Protection Tool yeah. that uh, locks down company, corporate yeah. information and still allows you to have your own personal yeah. information on your own device that uh, we have no control over yeah. because that's your stuff. Yeah, and, and that, that's vital when we do MDM projects as well. Mm -hmm. So we want to give the users safe access to something, Wi-Fi, email, internal systems. but. An equally big part of any MDM project is really educating the users. So what are you now able to do? And what should you still avoid? And what are we as IT able to do with your device? And what are we not able to do with your device? Mm -hmm. And that's again, it's about trust. And if we can build trust, and if we could always, we have spoken about why many times or over the days, and if we can get the user to understand their why. So why would I manage, let IT manage my phone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you will be able to do things that you wouldn't be allowed to do otherwise. So there must be something for the actual user 
in moving to that digital workplace, regardless of where they are. And understand that we are not trying to replace a number of people with IT, because every single person in an organization have vital knowledge about that organization, which we want to keep in that organization, but also let them share that knowledge uh, in a better way because mm -hmm. we can remove repetitive tasks, we can make f processes go faster, we can enable people to work when and where it suits them. So it's all, most of these things comes down to the soft parts of digital workplace, which we always need to include and see the value in. Because it's super easy to design a workplace from a technology perspective, it's when you add people. And when you need to educate them. Exactly. Because I had a really great example when uh, <coughs> regarding the mobile device management. Uh, and we advised users to enroll their devices. Uh, but the information, how it was presented, was that the um, company is going to take over your yep. device and it's going to be controlled and stuff like that. And one of the main reasons why people uh, said and gave feedback also to human resources and stuff was that I don't want company to see my private photos. Yeah. And it was never explained to them that really we can't actually see your photos. Yeah, yeah. We just want to make secure our data, our corporate data. And, yeah. and uh, educating uh, employees is key part here, I yeah, think. Absolutely. And also, like I said uh, previously, to understand the connection to the parts of IT that aren't user, that the users don't experience. So storage, um, networking in the cloud or in mm -hmm. a hybrid cloud, it can be any backups and so on. That should always be made with the user in mind as well and how it affects the digital workplace. So I, as a workplace architect, can't do everything on my own, but it's vital that I get help from people that understand the back end mm -hmm. of things. So if I need a new app, I need to talk to someone that can ensure me that that app will behave and have the performance it needs. So it's all about having that holistic perspective of the workplace and not just focusing on this device and that device and that conference room. It's about putting it into perspective and see how everything fits together. And that's really what I see my customers asking for. Architects uh, and internal staff as well that see that connection more than each individual technology to so how does everything fit together and how can we optimize based on the relationships between different parts of the technology. Yeah. And from your experience, uh, experience, have you seen uh, like uh, what is like the greatest example how you think digital workplace uh, automate uh, some simple tasks for daily work? I think currently I'm really excited about what AR does for the workplace. So augmented reality, yeah. because that's such an easy way to understand what technology can enable us to do. So from a training perspective that, okay, I haven't done this before. Can someone help me? Yeah. Put on an augmented reality glasses and you can get instructions in front of you that you can close to touch today. So currently that's something I'm really excited about to see AR and also VR and how that changes the ways we interact with other people and with processes and with common tasks that we perform. Mm. But I've also seen really cool examples of where organizations allows one of their employees to choose their own device, work in the way that suits them, and where it's vital to understand that Trust goes both ways as well. We need to trust or users need to trust their IT organization, but the IT organization and the organization as a whole also need to trust the employees to make use of it in the best suitable way, to trust that a certain person can work from home, as an example. And I've seen those cultural changes at some customers and where we only change the culture, they have the technology already, but we do a huge job changing the culture and how it's used, and that really makes a huge difference. Yeah, and then I don't think it's just in IT, the culture thing. Uh, yes. It's, it's not 
uh, like a quick jump. No. It's a, it's a slow process, but eventually we'll get there. Yeah. And uh, I think a part of it is uh, uh, with like older comp companies which have like uh, old systems, yeah. uh, legacy environments. Uh, it's the hybrid uh, optionality Absolutely. that uh, could help them yeah. really speed up this uh, process. Yeah. And then they just build these bridges to s couple of cloud uh, environments or a couple of groups of people move there and start testing it out yeah. and uh, spreading this culture. And uh, also saying to, let's say, uh, we had this actually one customer that said uh, uh, there was, I think finance team was moved to um, cloud environment yep. fully. And uh, as they started working there and they shed this great uh, opportunities that were presented to them and also this mobility. Yep. Uh, and all of a sudden, a couple of other departments are, hey, we also want to yeah. go there. <laughs> like really, that's, that yep. would help, uh, help me a lot. Yep. And uh, that would give me a really great flexibility to uh, Sometimes you have to pick yeah. up a kid from uh, school, exactly. uh, stuff like that. And I mean, you're locked down in one place. It's hard, hard to do that. Yeah. But if you can move around and work, uh, yeah. be mobile, then it's uh, way yeah. easier. And I think that's one of the, if, if I, from this conversation, can give you three takeaways. Mm -hmm. I would say that that's one of the first thing. Try stuff and make small changes continuously. Mm -hmm. And that's something we have started to do in software development, in the infrastructure parts of IT, but we need, really need to put that into the workplace as well. So small continuous changes that will make a huge difference. The um, other thing is that even the workplace is hybrid. So I don't tell my customers to go full cloud straight away, but mm. leveraged cloud services when it again enhances the workplace. And don't be afraid of trying that as well. You don't need to move everything. You don't need mm -hmm. to move data straight away. You can actually get a lot of security, a lot of mobility, a lot of productivity from cloud services that can enhance your even your legacy environment. And the third thing, and this is probably the hardest thing that I tell my customers, today, when we have all these possibilities, all these different vendors, we actually need to have a strategy for our workplace, both from a technology perspective, but also from a vendor perspective. So I usually go out to customers and they tell me, we want the best of breed for everything. Mm. And that's really the wrong way of looking at it. You need to have something to build on. You need to choose one strategic vendor or partner that you then find the best integrations to. And it doesn't matter which partner or vendor that is, but you need to choose one. And every single decision you make after that need to have a great integration to that strategic partner, strategic vendor of yours, because the integrations will be the real differentiator. How easily you can integrate systems, solutions, everything will be the core component moving forward, enabling automation, enabling um, data gathering, enabling easy workflows for your employers or employees. Mm -hmm. So hybrid, continuous development, and choose a strategic partner and create that strategy for your workplace. That's the three takeaways I usually give to my customers, and then we can build on that. Actually, I was about to ask some uh, yeah. more personal question. Oh, how, yeah. did, how did you become an MVP? Ah, how did that very, turn out? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, so I started to work with Workplace eight or nine years ago. And I've, I've done everything. I've delivered computers. I've worked with um, management tools. I've done a lot of things. But something I'm really passionate about and where everything kicked off mm -hmm. is about training and enabling users to use technology. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer as well. So that's where it all t it took off. And one great way of teaching and learning and sharing knowledge is to blog. Um, and I tweet a lot. And then it took off sharing my experiences and having great discussions with the Microsoft product groups. And one day I received the email and that's um, the uh, prime moment of my career so far uh, because I, the MVP title enables me to meet so many people and to learn. That's also vital still for me. I, I love to teach, I love to share knowledge, but to be able to meet new people is really the opportunity I appreciate and value.
digital workplace will definitely be something that grows on you, something that we need to take more seriously and that we need to prepare for the future. And uh, with those three takeaways, I'm absolutely sure that any organization, regardless of how much legacy they have, can build a more digital workplace. Okay, Simon, thank you for coming here. It was a great pleasure seeing you and talking with you and giving this uh, uh, fresh pair of eyes on digital workplace. Thank you for having me.